Welcome back to Globetrotting. Over 70% are unsubscribed. Be sure to hit that button. It would mean a lot. The Boeing 757 has been a mainstay of the Delta fleet for decades now. Often when you think of the 757, I wouldn't blame you if you immediately think to that major US company. It's played a pretty pivotal role. And it's also been known for its versatility. That will be a very important thing to remember throughout the duration of this video. At the time of the 757's introduction, there was a lot of talk on how you would replace the 727 with fuel efficiency, capacity, and more. Described as a pocket rocket, the 757 does boast a pretty suitable range, has a decent amount of capacity for the aircraft itself, and has offered for decades a flying experience that many have complimented. For Delta, the 757 has been a resounding success. Reasons such as the capacity alongside range have meant the Delta can deploy it across various missions. Yes, shock horror, I'm going to say it again, but the versatility being a real key to this plane. Whether short or medium, there were fantastic results. And whether it also was a high frequency or more a niche market, even towards international flights, the 757 was able to offer, or is able to offer, Delta what it needs. Maybe even then, it can be viewed as a one-of-a-kind aircraft. There's no other 757. Trust me, I know. But what I mean is there's nothing that can really replicate it. And, well, that's part of the problem. The 757's performance extends to high altitude in hot weather markets, also its ability to fly to diverse locations, whether it be a smaller airport or a smaller runway, making it the jack of all trades. Despite the success, the unfortunate reality, as I'm sure you'll know, is that the 757 is an aging aircraft type, and many airlines worldwide have begun retiring their 757 fleets in favour of more efficient models. Some airlines have ultimately said goodbye for good, others are in the final stages, and then you have companies like Delta. The primary reasons we're seeing all these retirements centre around the basics. Airlines want to lower their operational costs. They want more fuel-efficient aircraft, and they want want to align with sustainability goals that have been laid out for them that need to be reached by a certain year. And really, just generally from a fleet point of view, streamlining has greater repercussions. And this means for an aircraft type like the 757, it's no longer required despite having a pretty successful lifespan. The 757 is an aircraft type that remains a workhorse in the United States especially. This is for airlines like Delta, but also extending over to United. These are two companies that have really struggled to retire the 757 due to its unique niche in their fleets, which this video has briefly touched on already. The combination of range, capacity, and performance is really unmatched by any other single current aircraft in production. This has led to what I've been talking about, a prolonged reliance on the 757, despite it growing in age, which is really only seen with specific aircraft types that are retained for maybe longer than arguably you would have expected. It highlights not just the true love an airline has for that specific aircraft, but just how fundamentally important they are to the airline airline's success and route network. For Delta, the 757 continues today in 2024 to be an invaluable asset. The airline uses it pretty extensively across its route portfolio, with it being perfect for those markets that don't require a wide body, but need, say, a larger level of capacity than a 737. And, well, it's tough to replace, so let me discuss that. One of the significant challenges Delta and other airlines face is the need for a direct replacement for the 757. We know that Boeing has yet to develop a like-for-like -like successor, which has left a gap in the market. The A321neo series from Airbus now includes the A321LR and A321XLR. These have emerged as popular alternatives, which offer companies extended range and all the modern efficiency requirements that you would need. And this is fantastic for airlines. In fact, these planes have been a game changer, with many heading in this direction after waiting waiting years for an alternative that ultimately never arrived from Boeing. However, ask an airline like Delta, which has ordered and incorporated the A321neo into its fleet. Even with the capabilities of this aircraft, it doesn't perfectly match the 757. And they'll say it's not the perfect fit. In fact, you can sift through comments from executives across the last decade, and they've been very vocal about that. Sure, you then have an airline to a certain extent waiting for ideals, and the absolute 
absolute perfect aircraft, which will never come. You can't wait always for perfect. But it's a valid comment from an airline that loves a specific aircraft type and has such a reliance on it. Delta has been vocal also about the need for a new middle of the market airline, which has been dubbed NMA and so much more. The aircraft was expected to fill the gap left by the 757, offering similar range and capacity, but with your more modern technologies. While many airlines and leasing companies called for this, Boeing's plans for the NMA did not materialize into anything firm, leaving Delta to not just continue relying on its aging 757s, but understanding the realization that they weren't going to have a like-for-like -like replacement, so they needed to look elsewhere for a fit that could be as perfect as possible. At the very least, we saw Delta adapt and purchase the A321neo jets to utilize these, including other wide bodies to try and fill an operational void that will eventually be left by the 757. However, the airline has also publicly acknowledged that there is no perfect replacement for the 757, and that's fine. You would argue that Delta is not the only airline to feel this way. Nowadays, the 757s are still flying across the United States, and US airlines have decided to extend the service life of this aircraft through to the end of the decade, with Delta leading the fray here. They have invested in upgrading and ensuring the continued maintenance of these jets to see them as reliable and competitive as possible. But remember, these planes are not new. They're not part of the next generation. They're only going to give so much to Delta and their customers. Looking ahead, Delta will one day say goodbye to the 757, a scary prospect, and that day will be a sad one for the airline and us aviation enthusiasts. But as stated at the beginning, the company has used this plane for decades, and its reliance has really been unwavering, being now one of the last airlines to fly it with passengers across a network so thoroughly. So, to summarise, the dilemma surrounding the 757 is one that's been ongoing, and will continue probably until the day the plane is retired and even beyond that. The airline's purchase of the A321neo and use of other available aircraft is an important step in the right direction, even looking towards the 737 10, part of the MAX series, this is your high capacity variant that remains uncertified, but Boeing has certainly put forward as a 757 alternative to try and rival the A321neo. There will always be the ifs, buts and maybes if there was an NMA and its obvious impact on the Delta operation. But for now, Delta will continue flying the 757, so if you are a lover of the flying pencil, head towards your local airport if you're in North America and give it a spot. Thank you very much for your support here on Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in a couple of days for your latest aviation analysis. Take care, and until then, be safe. And flight, and we'll fly.